It was Christmas Eve. In a small town in Germany, Clara's family were having a party for all their relations. First, they had to decorate the Christmas tree. Each year, they brought out the well-loved and familiar decorations and carefully unwrapped them, hanging glowing glass baubles and shining foil-wrapped chocolates on the branches. This year, there was a new decoration: a fairy for the top of the tree. She was wearing a dress the colour of sugar plums. Papa lifted Clara up, and she gently placed the fairy on the top of the tree. Clara and Franz played by the light of the fire as they waited for their guests to arrive. Clara dressed up her dolls and brushed their hair, while Franz polished his toy soldiers' buttons and boots. Soon the guests arrived. Clara and Franz's grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins all came into the warmth, laden down with presents. Last to arrive was Godfather Drosselmeyer. He always brought extra special presents for all the children, <laughs> and tonight was no exception. His eyes twinkled as he gave Clara her present. The present was a nutcracker, but no ordinary nutcracker. It was made as a little wooden man dressed in a red and black uniform. Clara hugged it closely to her. Franz was sure it was a soldier, and so he should have it. He <coughs> grabbed it from Clara, but she held on tight. <coughs> In the tug of war struggle, the poor Nutcracker's leg came off. Godfather Drosselmeyer took the Nutcracker gently from Clara and whispered some magic words over it. He then told Clara to let the Nutcracker rest by the fire while she went off to play with her cousins. He'll be fine by midnight. Just look out for the mice. Clara had so much fun at the party that she forgot all about her Nutcracker and went to bed without him. She woke up at midnight. My Nutcracker, she thought. She crept downstairs and found him where she'd left him by the fireside. She curled up by the hearth and went to sleep with her Nutcracker in her arms. Clara suddenly awoke. She could hear a scrabbling sound coming from the corner of the room. She opened her eyes and saw a group of mice coming towards her. The mice were getting bigger and bigger, and there were more and more of them appearing. The biggest mouse, bigger than a dog, who was the mouse king, was heading straight for Clara and her Nutcracker. Clara was very frightened, but she held on to her Nutcracker tightly. From another corner of the room came the sound of drumming. Clara turned and saw Francis' toy soldiers marching towards the mice. The soldiers grew as they marched, so that soon they were as big as the mice. The Nutcracker moved in Clara's arms and came to life. He leapt up, growing taller by the second, and led the army of toy soldiers into battle. Click here to watch the battle in detail, or turn the page to carry on reading. The battle was full of smoke and noise and shouting. Clara couldn't see what was happening, but she knew her Nutcracker wasn't safe. She threw her slipper at the Mouse King, and he fell over. All the other mice ran away, taking the Mouse King with them. As Clara turned to her Nutcracker, she realized he had grown even taller. I am a prince, he said. The Mouse King had cast a magic spell to make me a Nutcracker forever. You have rescued me. Clara looked in amazement at the Nutcracker Prince. Come with me, he said. Clara and the Nutcracker Prince flew by magic over glittering snowy landscapes until they reached the sea. They flew on until they came to a shining white island of sugared icing. An avenue of licorice wheel trees led to a palace built of lemon sherbets, jelly beans, and candy canes topped with fluffy marshmallows. A fairy wearing a sugar plum dress flew out of the palace. Welcome to my kingdom of sweets, she said. I've been waiting for you both. She led Clara and the Nutcracker Prince to a great hall full of people from all over the world and lands beyond, who were dancing and feasting. Their gorgeous gowns of greens, purples, golds, and reds swirled round and round as they danced. Clara and the Nutcracker Prince sat on thrones and watched the entertainment. The Sugar Plum Fairy danced specially for them. Clara could not believe how happy she felt. Click here to watch the dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy, or turn the page to carry on reading. Soon, too soon, it was time to go home.
The sugar plum fairy tucked Clara and the Nutcracker Prince into a beautiful sleigh made of sweets and sugared icing, wrapping blankets and furs around them for the journey home. Clara felt warm and happy as the sleigh flew by magic over the snowy landscapes, and she fell asleep. When Clara woke up, she realized she was back home. The Nutcracker was in her arms, back to his original size. Francis' toy soldiers were scattered on the floor, and at the top of the Christmas tree was the fairy with a sugar plum dress, smiling down at her. Clara shook her head and wondered if it had all been a dream. Outside, it was daylight, and she could hear the bells ringing to celebrate Christmas Day. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Happy Christmas, everyone.